drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world previous lecture i introduced you to the concept of cct curves continuous cooling curves and i briefly concluded a lecture mentioning about martensite today we'll see details about martensitic transformation and uh, what is martensite to start with martensite is a non equilibrium single phase structure perlite was a dual phase structure but martensite is a single phase structure but it is a non equilibrium phase that is it is a meta stable phase it is not the phase where which is energetically most stable but it is the most stable uh, it is the phase which is present because of the kinetic hindrance okay and martensite is formed by diffusionless transformation of austenite for the formation of benite and perlite you saw that there has to be diffusion taking place but martensitic formation is a diffusionless process diffusion is not involved during martensitic formation how is martensite formed martensite is formed by rapid quenching to low temperature you cool austenite which is at high temperature austenitic material at high temperature to quite low temperature at a rapid pace that will lead to conversion of austenite to martensite what exactly is happening during martensitic transformation during martensitic transformation large number of atoms all of them move together and they move by very small displacement which really do not require diffusional processes to be activated small distance movement by large number of atoms together relative to each other that leads to martensitic transformation therefore this is a diffusionless process what is happening during uh, martensitic formation as i said basically austenite is getting converted to martensite now what is austenite austenite is face centered cubic structure whereas martensite is body centered tetragonal bct bct structure is something in which one of the axis is larger than other two axis so basically we have a uh, cube slightly elongated cube so it's not a cube rather a cuboid but the elongation is very less these two axes are of equal length this axis if this is a this is approximately 1.04a around it uh, actually depends on how much amount of carbon is there in the system that will decide this length but it's approximately till 4% larger in dimension this uh, dimension now this bct martensite is actually a super saturated uh, solution it is super saturated with carbon that is due to the rapid quenching carbon did not get time to escape out it could not diffuse out of the material and attain the equilibrium state rather the carbon somehow accommodated within the material thereby forming the bct structure which is super saturated with carbon and this super saturated carbon which are uh, present in the uh, tetra in the void sites leads to a lot of internal strain the super saturation leads to a lot of internal strain and it is this internal strain which gives martensite a very very high strength and very very high hardness this is the hardest phase that can be made out of steel cementite is a harder phase but cementite cannot be throughout the material right it can be a portion of the material if you want to convert the whole material into one phase then uh, martensite is the hardest phase possible hardest okay 
and as i said that uh, that uh, there is no diffusion involved rather very small amount of displacement which actually takes place at the speed of sound therefore the transformation is instantaneous transformation it occurs at the speed of sound instantaneously the austenite converts itself to martensite and this process is not diffusion driven thereby it is not time dependent rather it is a athermal process that is it depends on the temperature the amount of martensite formed during the process is a function of temperature lower the temperature more is the drive or uh, more is the effect of the quenching lower you go the uh, go in the temperature more is the amount of super saturation and larger amount of martensite is formed out of the austenite okay this idea we will see in the ttt curve if you remember from the previous lecture i showed you the curve in the cct curve also we had these things m start m 50% m 90% this is the perlite start perlite finish benite start benite finish now suppose that you take the material and heat it to the single phase austenitic region and you cool the material in such a way that it does not hit the perlite start curve rather it keeps cooling it is quenched and it hits the martensite start curve martensite start line when you hit the martensite start line uh, then martensite starts to form from the austenite austenite gives rise to martensite the lower the material goes at in temperature the lower it is cooled to more the, is the amount of martensite formed further lower further higher amount of martensite formed so basically during martensitic transformation what is happening is austenite is getting converted to martensite but at any temperature you are not really reaching 100% martensite maybe at uh, room temperature at 25 degrees celsius maybe you have m 99% maybe at minus 50 degrees celsius you have uh, m 99.95% but there is no martensite finish line as such okay so at any condition you have austenite converted to martensite which is a very very hard phase as we discussed but there is some amount of austenite remaining and that austenite is termed as retained austenite this retained austenite can be useful or harmful depending on the application it is put to retained austenite is itself a much so softer phase than martensite so if our main criteria is uh, to have a material which has very high wear resistance or uh, very high hardness then having retained austenite in high percentage can be very detrimental to the property but if you need some flexibility some ductility in the material then maybe it's not a bad idea to have some retained austenite okay now similar to the idea which i discussed previously about uh, the shifting of the perlite start perlite finish curves on alloying similarly the martensite start and different martensite percentage lines also shift either upwards or downward depending on what alloying element is present and in what percentage that alloying element is present so there will be different curves for martensite start and martensite 90% depending on what is the composition of the material involved okay now what is the slowest rate of cooling which will give you martensite the slowest rate of cooling which will give martensite is the rate where we just avoid the nose we just avoid the nose then we are able to plunge into the martensite region but 
if we uh, go through the nose then we won't be able to get 100% martensite or a very high percentage martensite we will also end up getting some perlite in that system right so this gives you an idea about how martensite is formed martensite is basically formed by rapid quenching rapid cooling of austenitic material how much martensite is formed depends on the final quenching temperature how cool you are going now let us see some phase transformation scenarios suppose I use this cooling curve then I get 100 percent perlite right now let's suppose I use this cooling curve and then I quench it then I quench it then what will happen here I will form almost 50 percent perlite but the rest of the perlite now uh, rest of the austenite will now convert to martensite okay similarly suppose we go here we go into the benetic region and then we quench it what will happen we will form certain amount of benite out of the austenite and the remaining austenite when we quench it will form martensite and in all the cases when there is martensite produced there will be some amount of retained austenite so what are the phases again in case A we had 100% perlite in case B we will have around 50% perlite plus martensite plus retained austenite in this case we will have almost 50% benite plus martensite plus retained austenite so by seeing the cooling curve and we can decide the schedule which needs to be followed and you uh, that schedule will give us different microstructure will give us different phases in the material we can tailor the schedule of heat treatment to get different phases different microstructure thereby getting completely different properties out of the material okay that is why these transformation curves are so handy and so useful I hope you got uh, idea about what martensite is and how it is formed and the utility uh, to which CCT and TTT curves can be put to I will continue further from here in the next lecture till then have a great day goodbye